Welcome back to our AutoCAD series. Uh, right now we're actually going to show you how to do one of our first drawings. Now, I'm looking at chapter 6, and I'm going to do exercise 6-1. So what I've done is I began with, I started with chapter 6, it talks about lines and drawings, construction, and drawing constructions using AutoCAD. Now I've read through, I understand the definition and difference between a line and a P-line or a polyline. Um, I've looked around through my uh, chapter, I've read up, I understand what an O-snap is, what a running O-snap is, what a circle, what the trim function does, what the offset does, what the mirror does, and what the fillet does. It's not fillet, it's fillet. I also understand how to erase and how to zoom. So, I'm starting in on the drawing. I'm actually looking at page 72 of the text or the PDF file that you might be looking at. Um, and so I'm going to be pulling that up. I'll actually going to do it on my other screen, so you're not going to see it on this screen. The reason being, if I go back and forth, it'll probably drive you crazy. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to go open. I'm going to go back into my shared drive. So I'll click on the open button. I've gone in and I'm actually in my shared drive under Benson in the pre-engineering folder and in the AutoCAD exercises. These are the exercises provided with the text. With each copy of the text, I got a disk for them with the exercises on it. So we're good to go. So I'm going to go in there. I'm going to open up exercise 6-1 and open. Now again, it's going to show me that this is a read-only. That's great because I don't want you saving over top of my stuff. Now, step one has me open the file. Step two, um, actually step one and two has me open the file. Step three has me zoom to the whole file. So I type in Z, enter, A, enter, and I zoom to the file. Now my next step is I'm supposed to draw a line. Now, I've got my running O snaps on, so I, I'm supposed to type in L and enter, which I've done. And I'm supposed to type in end and then click the end of this line and then type in at 6 less than 180 degrees, enter. And it makes a 6 inch line that is, goes straight to my right, or excuse me, my left on the screen. The next thing I'm supposed to do is I'm supposed to type in at 2.5 less than 270 degrees. Now what I've just done is I've set in what we call a relative coordinate. In fact, you should have read about that in the chapter, in this chapter as we're starting it. That relative coordinate allows me to go relative to my location on the screen. Well, the way the coordinates work is they start counting out here to our right, straight right is zero, and as I go up and around in a counterclockwise motion, it counts my angles. And as you can see that happening on the screen right now. So as I go around, it counts them out. So if, if I know where I'm going or what angle I want, I can literally type it in and what distance. Well, right now I want to go back here to this endpoint. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to use my O snap to get to the endpoint right now. So instead of using a at six less than zero, I just drag my cursor over, get the endpoint snap, which you can see on your screen right now, and I click and I'm done with that part. Now, the next part I do is I do the bottom piece. I do the same thing. I attach with an end snap, end point snap to here, which it tells me to do in my text. I drag it straight out, and I type in the at six less than 180 degrees. Now, there is another way to do that, okay? This book was written for an older version of AutoCAD than you're probably using. So let's cancel that command right there. So let's hit our escape key. And I'm gonna go line. I, again, I attach with an O snap right here to the end of this, but if I put on my ortho lock by pressing, F, by pressing F8, point my cursor straight out here to the left, and type in a 6 and press enter, it makes an exact 6 inch line. Now I'm supposed to go down 0.75. Well in this case, I can point my cursor straight down, type in 0.75, enter, and I go exactly 0.75 inches down, and I can come back here to the end. It's a lot easier than typing in those relative coordinates. Okay, so I've got that part drawn. Now, the next thing I'm supposed to do is I'm supposed to ID a point. Now, ID sets our relative position on the screen. So if I do an ID and then press enter, and I say, okay, I want to ID, say, this point right here. In fact, in our book, it says ID D1 from figure 6-3. Well, this is point D1 from, from figure 6-3, this upper left-hand corner of this box. So once I click on that, it tells me the next thing I'm supposed to do is type in C. Well, if you watched, C is the shortcut for circle. I press enter, and then I tell it a relative coordinate from where I was at to where it's going to be. In this case, it's going to be at 1.5 inches to our right, comma, and I'm going to tell it to go down, so I'm going to do negative 1.25 inches from where we're at with that green box. There's my center of my circle. Now, I'm supposed to have a radius of 0.5. 
Well, it's already on radius, so I just type in 0.5, enter. There's my circle. So let's do that again, but this time we're going to make another circle that's going to show up right over here. So I'm going to go ID, enter. I'm going to select this same point I did before, which is the top left-hand corner of the box we drew. And now I'm going to go C for circle, enter. And this time, I'm going to tell it to do a distance of, well, it's halfway over, so it's at 3, comma, and I'm going to tell it to go down from that point, minus 0.75. Well, there's the center. Now, it's got a diameter of 0.5 instead of a radius of 0.5. So I can either type in a D for diameter right now. If you look right down here on the bottom, I'll take my cursor down there so you can find it. If I type in a D for diameter, it'll change it to, to diameter. Or I can leave it at radius. If I do it at radius, I type in 0.25, and it'll do a half inch diameter circle. Or what it tells us to do in the book is type in D for diameter, press enter, and then type in 0.5, and we're good to go. With that done, um, we're going to put in the next piece. We're going to put our center marks on there. So follow with me, and we'll finish this up. So hang on for just a second. OK. Now we're going to pick up where we were. Sorry, I had to stop for just a second. Now, here's what we're going to do next. We're going to go in on this part, and we're going to put in some lines. Now the lines represent the hidden holes or these holes as they cross through this piece because this is the top view and this is the front view. The book gives you a hard way to do it. They tell you to click on D1, D2, D3, D4 from figure 6-4. Well the problem is D1 and D2 are here. You have to eyeball the line up. I'm going to show you an easier way to do that. First off, I'm going to type in LA which is our layer command. So I type in LA and press enter. It's going to pop up our layer settings. Here's our layer settings. Well, I want to go to a hidden layer right here. Now, in my drawings, I like to color code. So while you don't have to do this, I'm going to simply go in here and I'm going to change this to be a green line. So there's the green. All right. Now, it's already a hidden line type, so I'm good to go. I'll check that box right there to make that my active layer, and then I'll minimize this. Now, if you look right up here, this is the easier way to set it. I could have literally pulled this down and picked hid. Same thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how D1 and D2 line up. D1 actually should line up with this quadrant right here. So it should come from this quadrant straight down here until it's perpendicular to the bottom. That's my D1 to D2. My D3 to D4 is from this side of that circle to perpendicular. My D5 to D6 is right there. My D6 to D7 is right there. My D8 to D9 is right there off that quadrant to that perpendicular. And my D9 to D10 is right there. Or 11 to 12, sorry. Once I've got that, I just have to trim. So I type in the trim command, which it has in the textbook. It's actually on, OK, actually, it's not in this one, but it's in the chapter. That's funny. So I trim using that line. And I'll pick off this. I want to get rid of that part. I want to get rid of that part. I want to get rid of that part. Now let me show you how I did that again. I stop where I'm doing. I went trim, TR for trim, pressed Enter. I picked this edge to cut with. I pressed Enter and I started picking off the pieces I wanted to disappear. When I'm done, I press the Enter key and I'm back out. Now, the next thing it asks us to do is change it to a center line. Well, a center line is what this is right here. This is a center line. Well, I need to put a center line in that circle, in that circle, and down here. Well, here's the deal with this. I have a center line layer right there, but if you look at it, it's black. It really doesn't stand out. I'm going to change my layer again, just so you can see it more clearly on the screen. I'm going to change it to a red. Now, in my world, Red and yellow are the two thinnest line types, which are usually our center lines. Green and cyan are our two medium line types, which are usually like uh, hidden lines, dashed lines, etc., stitch lines, things like that. Um, blue, magenta, and black, or color number seven, which is the default color, those are usually our object lines when I draw. So just so you're clear on what I'm doing here. So I just changed that to red. Now I've done that. I'm going to close this up. I'm ready to put a center line in. Now, here's how the center line works. Easiest way to do it, you go to your Anote tools. You come right over here to Dimension, and you click on this little down arrow right here. See this guy? There's your center mark. I click on it. I take my cursor, pick on the edge of a circle. I've got a center mark. I hit my Enter key. It does the exact same command. I hit the edge of the circle. There's my center mark. It's really and truly that easy. Now, the only thing I have left to do is I have to go back to my Home tool, and I just want to draw a line that comes off right there and draws right through here. Okay. So I should have a center line that goes through each of these holes 
right there. Now, in real life, this line right here, this red line should extend past the edge of the object one eighth of an inch or 0 0.125. I'm going to eyeball it. In other words, I'm just going to click on these lines right here. I'm going to use my grip edits, and I'm just going to get it close for right now because for what we're doing today, close is okay. We're just getting you comfortable and drawing. When we get to details and we get to important things, then we'll worry about that. Okay, so I've just used my grip edits to stretch those down. So once I've got that done, I hit my escape key. I close that out. Last thing I do is put my name on this. Now, name's cake in this program. You've already got text here. Let's copy it. I use the copy command, not the Windows Control C or Control V. That causes problems in this program. So I just type in CP, press enter, and I'm going to pick name, the student name, the school, the date, and this class right here. And watch what happens. I hit enter. Now I'm just going to take my cursor off into Nowheresville right here. And I'm going to pick a spot, and I'm going to slide slightly down, and then look what's happening to the student name school. It's making a copy of them right below the first. I'm just going to get it in about the right spot, click once, hit my enter key, I'm done. Now I've got duplicates of student name school, date, and class. Well, watch this. I'll just double click here on the class. Okay, student name, come on, pop it up. There it is. It's let me edit. I can now erase it all and type in my name. It should be all caps because we're drafting. So I turn my cap locks on, Tim Benson, and I come down here to the next one, double click on it. School, well I teach at Canyon View High School, CVHS. The date, well let's put in the date. It is, um, let's see, September 13, whoop, not 132, 13, 2013. Okay, the class, this is pre-engineering, it's actually, let's put in the class period. We are on a block schedule here, so that will be class B4. And I might put pre-eng if I want to. Okay, that's it. If I want to do the grade, I can do the same thing, but copy it to the side. That's all we got to do. You're done. So we'll let you work on that one, and then we'll show you what happens on the next one.